What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Josh. This is Beard Product Review and today I'm going to be covering sulfates. Alright guys, to start things off, let's discuss what is a sulfate. A sulfate is actually a surfactant. Now there's different types of surfactants. Um, it depends on their electric charge, how they are classified, um, you know, whether it's an, an anion or cation or anything like that, but none of that stuff really matters. All that matters about a surfactant is that it reduces surface tension of something when it's dissolved in a liquid. So basically what it does is, let's say I use a wash that has um, a, you know, a sulfate in it, which is a surfactant, and I use it in my hair, um, on my head, or my beard. What it does is it reduces the surface tension of the dirt and grime and oil and other things, and then it rinses out with water. So with that being said, there are many types of sulfates. Um, the most common one is sodium lauryl sulfate, um, which is what I'm going to be covering most and what I'm talking about most in this video. Sodium lauryl sulfate is contained um, in lots of different shampoos and conditioners and body washes and some beard washes and, and some face washes and all kinds of things. I actually pulled something out of my shower. This is a shampoo that my wife no longer uses, so I use it because I like to save money. And so this is Pantene, but uh, one of the, was it the second ingredient there is uh, sodium lauryl sulfate. So this product is in just about everything, um, even, even some shampoo that I just found in my shower. So the way you obtain uh, sodium lauryl sulfate in a lab or naturally, which I guess can occur, um, I didn't do too much research on that, so don't quote me on it for certain, but basically, and I had to write this down because it's a mouthful, uh, you, you get sodium lauryl sulfate by reacting lauryl alcohol, which is from um, plants like palm kernel oil and coconut oil, with sulfur trioxide gas. And then you neutralize it with sodium carbonate, right? Sodium carbonate is natural, the plants are natural, sulfur trioxide gas can occur in nature. Um, so it, I'm assuming it can happen um, all on its own. I didn't do that much research on that portion, but you do use natural ingredients to come up with what this stuff is. So can you create it in a lab? Yes. Does it exist in nature? Probably, I probably should have done more research on that. But that's how you get it, is you combine those three things, you come up with sodium lauryl sulfate. Based on my research, and what I mean by research, guys, is I'm reading an article, I'm reading a peer-reviewed article by multiple medical doctors or universities um, that was published um, in you know a science journal or um, something to that degree, right? I'm not talking about uh, Googling something and just looking at the first three things that pop up. You know, the reason why there's been a lot of controversy about sulfates is because people are saying that it's, you know, chemically made um, and it's bad for your skin, it's bad for your hair, uh, it strips everything out and just like makes your hair like fry out or something. Um, so I was never under the impression that sulfates did this. Um, I, I've always heard of them and known that I've been using them in my head hair for a long time. I mean, I am going bald, but I'm pretty sure that's genetic. I don't think it has anything to do with the sodium lauryl sulfate. Um, so I don't, I've never had a problem with it, but I did want to do the research to figure it out if the science says that sodium lauryl sulfate is bad for you. So here's what I came up with. I found a few articles, like I said, peer reviewed, multiple doctors, multiple sources. It looks like there were several studies that were misinterpreted. Um, one was by a doctor by Dr. Green who talked about uh, physical and chemical damage to the eye. And if that does occur, if you use high levels of SLS or sodium lauryl sulfate in your eye, it slows the healing process. Now, that was misinterpreted. Everyone thought for a while, a couple years ago, that sodium lauryl sulfate would make you go blind or give you severe corneal damage. It's not true. The study was misinterpreted. Um, it actually just slowed the healing process of someone who had damaged their eye already, and that was in high concentration. So um, I'll try and find that study and link it down below. If I don't find it, I apologize. You can probably just Google it though, Dr. Green uh, Laurel Sulfate Study, and you'll probably find it. But remember, it's gonna be ocular, so that's for your eyes. There's also a couple other studies that I found. Um, one of them was a dermatology test, a toxicology study that um, discussed, you know, putting laurel, different levels um, and amounts of laurel sodium sulfate on your skin. Um, and these tests are typically done in 24 hour increments. So that study did show that it does irritate the skin, um, but that's over a 24 hour period and it was temporary um, irritation, usually went, went away within a couple minutes um, or a couple hours, depending on how sensitive your skin is. Um, 
so I guess with all of that, I found that yes, it can irritate your skin um, and it does clean very, very well. And so using different concentrations of sodium lauryl sulfate is very important. Um, but with that being said, you know, you put the stuff on for a couple seconds or minutes at most when it's combined in your washes and it rinses out. So, you know, I've never had an issue with it. Like I said, I've been using these products for a very long time and I've never noticed my hair or scalp or any kind of irritation. So. Um, so that kind of cleared the air for me when it comes to like skin irritation and to me sure it probably causes skin irritation But so do most things if you leave it on your skin for 24 hours So that's my stance on it. You can like I said read this on your own um, Or if you don't believe me you can check out the links below so through my extensive research I never found anything that confirmed uh, you know that this product has um, carcinogenic properties or anything in it that would be carcinogenic. Um, if you guys find an article with like serious backup to it, you know, a study that's been completed and done over however much time or years or something like that, uh, let me know. So I, I can't tell you if it would be carcinogenic or not. Um, it, it, there's just not a whole lot of information out there on it. So I would go ahead and say for now, it's safe to assume that it's not carcinogenic, especially because we've been using this stuff since like the 1950s or 30s. I think, I don't know, somewhere around World War II time maybe that so sodium lauryl sulfate um, was, was starting to be used. So um, I don't think that it causes uh, cancer and it's not carcinogenic. So that, that, those are just my thoughts on that. All right, guys, so with that being said, um, I'm gonna you know show, like I said, this, um, I think it was independent, website here um dot uk or something like that i just was googling things and you know i came across a couple of different articles where they say oh sulfates are bad and parabens are bad and all these things and so the goal of this video was to only look at sulfates and so that's what i did and so i'm gonna highlight here on the screen you see this paragraph right here where it talks about sulfates um you know being bad and it doesn't really have any other sources or anything i scrolled all the way down um to the bottom i'm trying to figure out you know where they got this information was it part of a study um why does it say it's bad it's <sighs> Guys, I, from what I can tell, it's just a sales gimmick. Um, it's just companies trying to sell a product and so they're scaring the public into thinking that sulfates are bad. Um, I will say that different products that I have used like on my head hair will dry out my hair more um, than others. It's probably because um, from what I've found, uh, sodium lauryl sulfate can be anywhere between point 0.01% all the way up to 50% of a cosmetic product. And so if you have something that's in the higher end there, I'm sure it does a lot more cleaning. Um, but that's why we have conditioners and things like that to kind of replace um, you know, those things in your hair. So I would say that you're supposed to use them uh, sparingly. You're not supposed to use anything with sodium lauryl sulfate every day. If you do use it every day, make sure you're following up with some kind of conditioner because you're really just cleaning the heck out of whatever you're using it for. Um, and so for me, you know, it just, it's just common sense to use these products um, sparingly. I will say as well, um, you know, you as someone who uses a lot of beard products in my beard, I test a lot of beard products out, um, I tend to have a lot of beeswax buildup uh, over time, right? And so really stripping that away can get kind of difficult and I can always tell when I have really stripped it away because my beard will feel a lot lighter um, and fluffier. It, it acts a lot differently when I've really stripped everything out. And so I've used um, a beard product with sodium lauryl sulfate in it before. Um, it probably had a little bit too much, so it was like a really stripping cleanser, and that was fine with me for with me at the time because I knew I would be putting you know the natural oils back into my hair using beard oil and beard butter and all the things that we would put in there. So I would just say use it with caution if you do use it on your beard. Um, for me, I don't really use it on my beard very often. If I feel like I have a ton of buildup, like I'm talking about something I can't clear with like a regular wash, like I did a video on some live bearded wash that I really like, if I feel like that's not doing it, then yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna want to strip that stuff out of my beard, guys, and have a fresh start. And something with a sulfate such as sodium lauryl sulfate um, would be something that I would go with. Um, so, you know, use it sparingly. Use it when it makes sense. Um, you know, don't damage your beard. Can you do damage to your beard using sodium lauryl sulfate? I think you probably could. If you washed your beard every single day, you never replaced it with oils, and you never used a conditioner, it might it might damage your beard hair a little bit, probably. But is it gonna damage your beard hair if you do it once a week or twice a week and you're following up with wash, and, you know, or following up with conditioner and beard oil and other things that can help, you know, re-put in the nutrients and and provide your hair like with that moisture and comfort? Then no, I, I don't see it being a problem. So for me, guys, unless someone can show me a real scientific article on sodium lauryl sulfate or sulfates in general. Um, I think that they're safe. 
And I don't know why there's a whole lot of controversy behind them. Um, after doing the research, it just seemed um, re really basic. So, um, you know, tell me what you guys think in the comments down below. I'm always willing to admit that I am wrong. So if someone can come up with some um, research that shows that they are bad for you, please do so and comment down below. I would love to hear all of your thoughts. I know some of you guys out there, you know, you may have gone to college for chemistry or, you know, biology or something like that. You know, that's not what I did. I went to college. I became an engineer. I do math related stuff. I don't, I don't do um, all this biology type stuff. So like I said, I'm willing to admit I'm wrong. And with that being said, guys, embrace your beard and embrace the beard life. See ya.